I would very much rather be in person with you in Peru today. But given the distance between us, I am very pleased to have this opportunity to say a few words to you in this video from my home office in Denver, Colorado, United States. We at the Frederick S. Pardee Center for International Futures have the great pleasure of working with Saplan in exploring possible futures for Peru. Our own strong belief is that we can't really predict the future, and never will, but we can explore alternative futures and through our choices help shape better ones. Our own contributions in the work with Saplan have involved the use and extension of a modeling system called International Futures, capital I, capital F, small s, IFS. It's a computer-based forecasting system. It covers multiple issues. It forecasts long-term, and it's global, but with specific a country a specific attention to all countries, including Peru, and to regions like Andean and Latin American regions. It has a huge database associated with it, more than 3,000 data series, long-term, back to 1960 or even earlier, across all the issue areas and representing information from major international governmental organizations, think tanks, research institutes. It's also user-friendly for the most part, on the front end of it. It has an interface that I think most of you could sit down and play with and learn from. Further, it's open and transparent. We try to make it available for anyone around the world to use. It's available on the web. If you went to the URL pardee, P-A-R-D-E-E dot D-U dot E-D-U, D-U is in Denver University, rd.du.edu, you'd find to be able to use the system. All of the elements in IFS are interacting across these multiple issue areas, and we create to begin with a dynamic forecast of this interaction, of the unfolding of things that we call the base case. It's where we seem to be going in the future without any substantial intervention or change of orientation. We can compare that base case also with the past trajectory to see if, in fact, it does represent past patterns and the path that we are on. Let me give you an example around something called total fertility rate, which is the number of children an average woman will have in her lifetime, and also around the years of education that adults have, both specific to Peru in this case. The total fertility rate in 1960 for Peru was almost seven, seven children per woman. Now it's fallen very rapidly down to about 2.4, and our own forecasts are that it's likely to be below two by 2050, that is to say, in the same general area of fertility rates currently in Europe. Similarly, the years of education that the average adult in Peru had in 1960 was only 3.5. Now that has climbed to more than 9, and by 2050 it's likely to be approximately 11 and a half years, and we would anticipate quality of education also rising over that intervening period. These are important major social transformations, the decline in the fertility rate and the rise of education, are both undergirding substantial transformations in Peruvian society, governance, the economy, the interaction with the outside world, all of the kinds of things that we're interested in thinking about and enhancing as Peru moves forward. Similarly, the model represents economics in multiple sectors, supply and demand in those sectors, and we pay special attention to productivity as well as to capital growth and labor growth. There are
are many scenarios for the possible future, and we want to explore those and ideally, through single interventions, changes in social action or government action or individual action or more complex ones integrated across many interventions. Let me give you an example from our recent analysis with Saplan, one that focuses on the informal economy. That is, those individuals who in their work are not in the formal economy with quite secure wages and benefits, but are working much more informally and without most often that kind of security. Currently in Peru, almost 65% of the population in the workforce is in the informal economy. Our own base case forecast suggests that that will decline to perhaps 48% by 2030. But what if we were able to accelerate that decline quite rapidly? Our analysis in this scenario suggests that the GDP, the gross domestic product, could be between 25 and 90% higher than in a base case. That wide range is because there's actually very considerable uncertainty even today about how much is, input, is produced in what is called the informal or shadow economy. This is just one example of a scenario intervention from many, many that can be undertaken and that have been undertaken with the international futures system. We look forward to that work in the future to try to better understand the opportunities for Peru. Once again, it's been our great pleasure to have been able to work and to continue working with Saplan in Peru on exploring, understanding, and shaping better future for Peru and Peruvians. Thank you for that opportunity and the best of luck in your meetings and our collective future endeavors.